Welcome to Temple of Heat. Today we're working on our door project and the part that we're at is the hinges. We're going to use an eighth inch thick material that is pickled and oiled hot rolled steel. It's one eighth by three inches wide. The problem is I don't have tongs that hold that material. I only made this one pair so far and they hold quarter inch material. So before we can start on the hinges, we have to use 5 8 square bar to go ahead and make another pair of tongs. And that's what we're going to work on in this video. of what's going on here and you'll understand that a little bit more in a second. Um, I call this a blacksmith shop but it really isn't a blacksmith shop. I don't, I'm not a blacksmith but I do like to do this kind of work and I'm doing it to the best of my ability with my limited tools that I have. So I'm making these tongs. What I've done, the first section with the forge and the anvil and a hammer, I've banged out this first piece. Then I took a metal cutting bandsaw and removed it from the stock that we started with. I've made another matching piece. And you want to make these two as identical as possible. Instead of cutting this off with a cutoff tool on the anvil like a blacksmith would do, I have to go back to that metal cutting bandsaw and separate this piece from the starting stock that we are working with. You want these two to be identical like I said, so I have them almost matching right from here. Then I'll be able to draw out the reins and make a matching pair of tongs. just missed the biggest spider. I don't know what kind it was. Maybe a wolf spider if some kind of thing exists. It was terrible. I'm going to have to put the house up for sale. Can't live in these conditions. Okay. The jaw, the second part of the tongs just came out of the vise after being cut off. What we have here is a matching pair of blanks. The jaws are roughed in. They're not done. They just they need to be finished, but they're close enough because they're almost identical to each other. The next step is going to be to draw out the reins. Here is the tongue blanks. What happened was this was the size we started with. And then this was drawn out into square 
tapered form that we're going to go to our next step with. It was done over the bick, and what I tried to do was get it as even as possible. The next step is going to be to make this piece look identical to this piece. And then our next phase will be to turn this into an octagon. And I believe the octagon part I'm going to do just over the anvil on the first one. If it seems to take too long or it's not working, I may go over the big, but I'm worried about going over the big because I don't know if I can control it. Here's the current situation with the tongs. We have two halves, and the goal was to forge them to be identical. And they're not identical, but they're very close. They're crooked. A lot of this stuff doesn't fit. But this is the point where I'm going to start tuning all that stuff up. If you put them together, you can see that I should have spent more time in the beginning making sure all this stuff was right. I don't do it that way because I think it's a waste of time. You don't know how they're going to go together. You need to get them both as close as you can in size and shape. And then from here I'll go back and refine all that. Let's take a look at where we're at on our tongs today. We have the two tong halves. They were both taken to the bit end where the pliers work, that was completed, then they were made into square tapers. This one probably needs to be about two inches long with more taper on it. This one is past that point, it's tapered all the way and then taken from square to octagon and it's ready now to go to round. This small end, I was afraid to over forge it so I stopped trying to make it exactly octagon. I think I can easily take it to round from this point where it's at now because all we're doing is we're going to push the material into the center and it should be fine because it is a little bit octagon but I didn't want to go crazy because I was afraid I was going to over forge it. The other thing since we're going to have the forge running I have this piece of scrap steel is a broken garage door spring so I took a angle grinder and I cut a piece off we're going to have the forge running anyways, so in the process, I'm going to let this get hot so I can straighten it out. All this is for, I don't even have a project for this material yet, but it's going to be great if I need a hardened point or something, I'll have the material all ready to go. So that's just, I'm just trying to use efficiency while the thing's running, it might as well heat everything up. It's 
one of the benefits of a gas forge over a coal fire. I can just let this sit in there and it can get hot and as I have time through the forging process while I'm waiting for this piece to heat up, I can work on straightening out this piece. And that's where we're at, what we hope to get accomplished today. now have a pair of tongs, the rivets installed, but they don't operate because in the process of setting the rivet heads, you lock everything together. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and get everything moving again. And these tongs are going to be designed to hold eighth inch thick material. So we'll look at them again once they're working. They hold the material and the reins are corrected because I don't like the way they're set and there's no gap in there. We're going to fix all that. Okay, we're finally at the end of this project and we have the tongs complete. And they turned out okay. So they're designed to hold 8 inch thick material. This is what I'm going to make the hinges that I need for my door out of. And I wasn't able to start the hinge project because I didn't have any way to hold the material. So this video is over and the next video up is going to be making the hinges. Thanks for watching.